If you're wondering how to edit your videos faster, then in this video, we're gonna cover a simple video editing process that can save you a ton of time and boost the quality of your videos, along with a stack of our best video editing tips and tricks to get you awesome results fast. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help entrepreneurs and business owners amplify their business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Video editing is definitely the part in the video production process that most people hate or try to avoid. If the thought of wasting a heap of time in front of the computer, trying to edit your video down and move all the pieces around in the timeline is up there with, watching paint dry, watching the cricket, changing a dirty nappy, or I really thought I'd have some better ones, but I don't. But either way, in this video, we're gonna run through the ultimate video editing process to help you efficiently edit your videos down without any wasted time or rework. And along the way, I'm also gonna share some of our best video editing tips that I've found over the years to help speed up your workflow even further. And while you're watching, drop a comment below and let us know your number one video editing tip that you wish you knew when you were starting out to speed up your video editing workflow. And as an added bonus, make sure you stick around to the end because we've also put together a short downloadable guide that that you can use as a quick start reference for all of these tips next time you're editing. Now, before we jump into the editing process, depending on the type of videos you're creating, you can make your editing easier by doing these three things. The first one is to be conscious of your editing while you're filming. So don't overshoot. Think about your end product. Are you going to actually be using all of this extra footage in your finished product? If not, then stop recording right now. So focus on your end goal. What do you need to shoot? How much do you need to shoot? If there's any chance at all that you might use the footage, then definitely keep rolling. But if there's a lot of stuff in there that you're shooting that is unnecessary and that you're not going to use, then definitely don't record it. So dialing that back in and reducing the amount of footage that you're actually going to have in your editing software is going to speed up your editing process because you've got less there to worry about. The second tip I have for you is to make your last take, the last sentence, the last dot point, your best one. So don't move on until you absolutely nail it or until you're absolutely happy with your last sentence or the last thing that you say, and then you can edit backwards in your timeline. So what this means is instead of in your editing, editing from left to right or start to finish as you normally would, if you're doing a content video like this and you only move on when you're happy with the last one, then you can actually edit backwards because what that'll let you do is hit that best take or the one that you know you wanna use first. Then you just go back through your timeline until you find the next sentence or the previous sentence or dot point or whatever you said. And that one will be the one that you want to use as well. So that'll speed up your editing massively. This will also remove having to cut your sentences in half and trying to use the start of one take and then trying to find a good ending from another take. It's gonna speed up all of that because you know at the time of recording, you're creating one take or one dot point that you are happy with and only moving on once you've nailed that. And the third tip I have around the filming side of things is to leave notes for yourself while you're filming. So essentially you're sending yourself messages or your editors messages in the future while they're sitting there going through your footage. So all you need to do is to get their attention. So something when they're scrubbing through the timeline that they see that there is a message for them. So you could clap three times and that way they'll see in the audio waveforms that there's a couple of spikes there, so something for them to take notice of. You could put your hand up to the screen, you could wave crazy for a few seconds, something where they're scrubbing through, they're going to notice that there is a message for them or a message for yourself. And the messages that you could leave would be things like, the audio might not be good, let's do another take, or I forgot to mention this, can we put this back at the start of the video. So you can leave messages for yourself while you're presenting to speed up your editing because you're essentially editing as you go. All right, so now let's jump into the actual editing process. Step one is to copy off and organize your footage first. So this is where you create a folder on your hard drive for each overall video. Inside it, you could have things like a footage folder, and inside of that, you could have things like camera one, camera two. It could be named by your camera guy's name or the type of camera, Panasonic GH4, GoPro. So at least this way, your footage is easy to find at a later date. You also have folders for audio, for graphics, for animations. You want a folder in there for your project files, and that's where your 
editing software project is going to sit, Premiere, Final Cut, whatever it is. You can also create a folder for draft exports or draft renders that you're doing. If you know that it's not the final, but you wanna get feedback on it, put all of those in that folder. And obviously you'll want one for your completed videos as well. So this is a great step to set you off on the right foot with your editing by having everything organized so that whether you're going to be editing right away or whether you're editing two months down the track, it's easy for you to find all of your files or have another editor find all of your files. Step number two is to import your video footage and your assets into your video editing software. Now, as you've already organized your footage from step one, a lot of video editing software will actually let you just drag and drop that parent folder, the main one, into your editing software and it will keep all the subfolders in there as well so that your footage is all organized inside of your editing software. And not all of your video editing software will let you do that so easily. You may need to manually recreate the folders or the bins inside of your video editing software and then import your audio, your footage, and all of your other assets manually. But it's another really important step to speed up your efficiency because it'll be so easy to find things because everything is in a logical place. Step number three is to create your project or your timeline and to drop all your footage into the timeline. Now here's where you wanna drop your footage down in the correct sequence or the sequence that they were shot at. Now depending on the gear that you're using and the record quality and record settings that you've used to record your videos, it is a good idea to set your project up to be exactly the same. Unless you've got a specific output that you need, try to match the two. So if you're shooting in 4K 30 frames per second, then ideally you're creating a 4K 30 frames per second timeline or project that you are editing in so that when you export and match those settings again, you're getting the best quality output all the way through. Step number four is to sync up any video or audio tracks. So if you're shooting with multiple camera angles or if you're recording audio externally, then this is where you will sync all of those up so that you don't have to worry about doing it later once you've started editing. Step number five is to start cutting down and refining your edit. So in this first pass, when you go through your edit, you wanna remove anything in here that you 100% don't want in your finished video. So this will be things like any bad takes, any mistakes, any unusable content, but anything that's questionable and you're thinking I might use this, it could work here, definitely leave it in on this first pass. So go through and remove anything that you 100% don't want in your finished video. Now you can actually speed up this step by bringing in a couple of the tips that we mentioned earlier. So if you did only move onto the next sentence, the next dot point while you were filming, once you were happy with the last one, then in this step, you can go back and edit backwards. So starting at the end of your timeline instead of at the start, hitting that best take or the one that you wanna use first. Now you can also look out for the markers or the notes that you left yourself while filming. So if you did grab your attention or clap a few times to leave some markers in there, then you can apply whatever you left there in this step as well. Maybe it's to use the second last take instead of the last one. Or maybe it's to move a chunk of your footage from the end back to the start because you forgot or left something out. So you can go through and process those to speed up this step. And another way that you can speed up this step where you're refining your footage down is to use the keyboard shortcuts J, K, and L on the keyboard. And these will help you play through your timeline much faster. So pressing J on the keyboard will play back your timeline in reverse and pressing it a couple of times will actually speed that up. If you press K, that will pause the playback or stop the playback. And if you press L, that'll play forward and pressing it multiple times will play forward faster. And one more really quick tip that is an absolute game changer is if your video editing software supports it, then find out the keyboard shortcuts for trim top and tail. On Premiere, it's Q and W. On Final Cut, it's option square brackets, left and right. And this will save you so much time cutting down a heap of video footage down to something short and manageable in a short amount of time. Step number six, and this might be dependent on the video editing software that you're using, but it is to duplicate your timeline so that you've got a back up at this point with just the usable content in case you need to come back to it at a later time. So it will save you going all the way back to the original footage because you've cut out already all the things that you definitely don't want in your video. And it's also a really good idea to remember to save your work as well. In step number seven, you're gonna build out the story. So after the first pass is complete and you've removed everything you definitely don't want in here, now it's time to reposition anything that might be out of sequence or move things around so they're in a more logical position now that you're seeing it in the timeline. 
So after you've done that, your video should really be starting to take shape. So step number eight is to add all of your audio into your timeline. So your music, your sound effects, or any other pieces of audio that you wanna have in there, drop them in and put them in position. So after that, step number nine is where you can further refine your edit. So this is where you will trim, reposition, and really refine your edits for both audio and video. So if you're editing to the music, this is where you can start to match the two together and start to cut to the beat, start to really tweak and refine and really get into the nitty gritty frame by frame editing to really start to tighten this edit up and to get it looking how you'd like. So this step is where your video really starts to take shape and it's where you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel and your video is really, really starting to come along. Now it is an iterative process where you play back through, you make tweaks and adjustments, play back through again until you're happy with the edit. Once you're happy with the edit, step 10 is to add in any text, any titles or graphic elements into your video. Step 11 is where you'll add in any video effects or transitions. So this is where you can really start polishing up your video and making it look good. Next up in step 12, you're gonna adjust your audio levels. So this is your music, this is your sound effects, this is any vocals or anyone speaking in your videos. Go through and adjust them all so that they're where you need them. Step number 13 is where you'll apply any audio effects. So if you've got any background noise reduction you need to do, you need to tweak the equalizers, add compression, or master up any of your audio tracks, then this is where you do it. Step number 14 is color grading. This is where you'll apply all of your LUTs, all of your color effects, or any color tweaks that you wanna to make to your entire video. That's now. Once that's done, step number 15 is to export your video and review it. So here, play it back on your computer. Play it back on multiple devices if you can, because the look and the sound can be different on different devices. Not all of us have access to professional color grading screens and monitors, and most of our videos these days are probably gonna be played back on mobile or tablet devices. So you wanna test it on a couple of those too, if you can, to make sure that it's looking and sounding exactly how you like it. And obviously, if you've got any changes, then go back and make those to your video. So step number 16 is to make your final changes or adjustments and export your video for release. Now, while you're exporting, make sure you're picking the best quality settings that match your project settings and also match your camera settings ideally. So if you're gonna be doing things like changing frame rates or resolutions, they can lower the quality of the video and they can also change the motion or how the video will actually look and play back as well. So you wanna make sure that wherever possible, your camera settings and the files that you've recorded match your editing settings, match your export settings as well. So that's the entire efficient video editing process. Now, every time you stray away from this process and start out jumping straight into color grading or effects, you're gonna slow down your system or you're gonna to need to come back later in the process and make adjustments. So you're gonna be wasting time by doing these sorts of things up front, which is the logical place. Most people start, they'll jump in and they'll throw a heap of color grades on to make the footage look good, but they haven't gone through the fundamentals and cut that footage down first. If you start with all of those effects, you're gonna slow down your computer, slow down your phone if you're editing on your phone, and you won't even know if there's a problem with your content until much, much later. If something happened to your content, you missed something or something was unusable, you'll wanna find that out as soon as you get into your edit or very soon after, not when you're much, much further down the process. Now to make this simple for you to implement this process and all the tips in your next editing project, we've put together a short PDF guide that you can use as a quick start reference to help guide you through step by step. So hit that link on screen now, or there's a link below in the description to grab your copy, and I'll see you soon.